folks. Welcome to the Daily Coin. My name is Rory, and today is Wednesday, October the 26th, 2016. And I have the very distinct honor and great pleasure of welcoming to the show for the first time uh, Mr. Lior Gantz, and he is the editor of the Wealth Research Group. And you can find all their work over at uh, wealthresearchgroup.com and uh, Lior has been an investor since uh, the age of 16. He's been a globe trotter. He's been into 30 different countries. And one of the main focuses of what he is doing is to help you to develop a well thought out game plan so that you can protect your wealth. And Lior, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm glad you're here. And, uh, with the action that's been going on with the precious metals recently, how do you see uh, the, this year playing out? Do you think we're going to just kind of ride through? you think the election's going to play into it? you think that one of these uh, war situations that we have going on, you think that's going to flare up? Or is there something that's completely off the radar that, that could swoop in? Well, um Interesting question. A few things. So elections important. I'll get to that. Uh, you know, debt cycle and everything that's going on. Get to that. And um, the third thing is two wild cards that nobody's talking about. And I'll get to that. Let's start with um, you know just the underlying reason to own gold. Uh, gold is right now the main strategic defensive asset. To own it's it had a beautiful year thus far october is notoriously throughout the last 30 years the worst performing months for gold so you're seeing very normal activity right now for the precious metal and um november is 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 a uh, historically a great month december it, we're gonna have the election obviously in november and december we're gonna have a, a fed decision last year the fed hiked rates and that sparked the bull market uh in gold to 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 come back let me tell you the reason for this the foreign um foreign holders of of bonds what they see is a rate hike is to them is magic they can come in they can buy uh treasuries that are not yet negative uh yields and so they flee from uh negative yielding european debt or uh japanese debt and they come into the u.s that makes uh, the bonds uh, um, not attractive. So people move to gold for protection. So a rate hike of another you know, 25 basis points, that's nothing. And it's actually going to be very favorable for gold. On the flip side, if they don't raise rates, then this is going to be very surprising and obviously good for gold. So this is a very asymmetrical trade coming in to the next uh, Fed decision which is very favorable. Um, November election, let me tell you this. If, uh, you know, the polls are saying Hillary is going to win this. So this, is, uh, this means more of the same, obviously. Um, very good for gold. If, if Donald Trump wins, this is going to surprise not only the people in America, but people around the world. And, and it's going to prove two things. It's very unpredictable times, which means uh, you know, uh, governments will raise their uh, gold reserves, etc., because it's it, you know nobody knows what's what's what can happen, and and this is just my opinion. They might they the powers that be might uh, try to blame Donald for everything that's going on, and just uh, tr try to you know expedite this uh, collapse that they're looking for. So very interesting times. Let me tell you two things that are very uh, off the radar, but are going to come into play. Uh, actually, three things. Italian referendum, 4th of December. If they decide to leave the euro, this is going to be massive. Um, second thing, there's something called the Muslim law, Rory. And the Muslim law is going to allow the World Gold Council is working right now with the, uh, uh, the Muslim uh, regulatory body to allow for the first time in 40 years uh, Muslims, 1.6 billion Muslims to be exact, in the Middle East mostly, to buy gold for the first time in 40 years. You got 112 
rich billionaires and 1.6 billion people who don't have an ounce of gold right now. Just think about this. Wow. Now, the sh- yes, it's, a, it's, it's going to be massive. It's probably going to come into play. In January, if if you want the full news about this, you you can go to wealthresearchgroup.com, sign up for the, for the uh, the newsletter, obviously for free, and we are going to update you as this comes and and, and rolls in. Um, now, the third thing about this, uh, this is very important. The Shanghai Exchange is 100% backed by gold. So, unlike the Comex in London and New York, where it's uh, the leverage is about 246 paper contracts to one ounce of gold, very, very leveraged. The Shanghai one is is one-to-one, meaning that everyone can take delivery. Now, just realize that uh, the Chinese are now creating clearing banks in Dubai for these Muslim people uh, to, to buy gold on their exchange uh, with Remembi. So what you're going to have is once these people take uh, delivery, this is going to play a big role on gold supply. Now, I don't know if you've seen the charts, but there hasn't been any huge gold discovery for 15 years. And they're getting scarcer and scarcer. That's, that's why the mining stocks have had such a beautiful year, because anything yeah. that's positive that comes, comes out is important. And, uh, well, with Wealth Research Group, we, we, we have researched over 758 companies this year and we profiled eight. Uh, eight. Four of them have more than doubled. Uh, one of them went 400% higher, 250%, and a few of them went 50% higher now. Um, so this is something we do for our free members. Uh, you know, we, we do so much research and due diligence before uh, we put out a suggestion. So anyways, very good year, and this is my take on gold. Coming into 2017, another thing that can be very important is that inflation is uh is picking up now the the reason that, that is inflation didn't pick up thus far is because you know the currency supply is basically the uh, it's separated into two the 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 currency supply that the government is in charge of and what the you know the people are in charge of the people go into commercial banks take out loans and this creates currency very inflationary this is what happened from 1971 until now uh, the U.S. demographics were very young. People took out a lot of loans to buy homes, cars, etc. Um, created this, uh, you know, amazing uh, inflationary cycle. Now the uh, the demographics are getting older. People are, are closing down debt levels. The young people are afraid of debt, not taking out debt. So the the private sector, the, the currency supply is shrinking every year from the year 2000. And you saw that coming into play in 2008, where you know, there was a, a liquidity problem just in the system itself. So what what happened? The government had to step in and, and start to inflate their currency supply. And what they do is they just borrow from the Fed using the QE programs. Uh, and then they saw that wasn't enough to create the, the uh, inflation again. So they lowered interest rate down to negative territory. Now, when the real interest rates are in negative territory, that's very, very favorable for gold. In fact, this is the only time-tested um, uh, uh, indicator of rising gold prices. It doesn't have to be negative, uh, you know, rates like in Europe. It could be just real interest rate in negative territory, meaning after uh, you discount inflation. So, uh, going into 2017, this is picking up steam. Very important. Inflation, from my perspective. And in reality, it's nothing more than theft. It is a hidden tax that um, Keynes, John Maynard Keynes, said so. It's He put it perfectly that it is unobserved and secret uh, theft by the government. And inflation, to me, is one of the most insidious aspects of our economy. Inflation was regulated by gold up until 1913. And since 1913, inflation has been completely out of control. And we have more or less uh, during 
particular cycles of the econ e e economic cycles, but it's always there. And it, it sickens me to hear the Federal Reserve, these thieves, say that they want to see more inflation. They need to see more inflation in order to, to um, kickstart the economy, in order to better the economy. What, and what I hear when they say that is, we need to transfer more of your wealth, uh, Rory, and from your account into our account. And that's, that's all that I hear. And the only way that I know to avoid that is to move some of my fiat currency Federal Reserve notes out of their system and into gold. That's the only way that I can avoid that happening and avoid them transferring more of my wealth into their, from my account into their account because I can't get around inflation until something changes. Gold used to regulate inflation at somewhere between zero and three percent depending on how much how much more gold that the government was able to bring on that would tell them how much more currency they could add to the system so I'll, I'll, it'll be a great day once the uh, once this system blows apart and the Federal Reserve goes up in smoke I mean I, I pray for that day I wanted to ask you about the You'd mentioned the Shanghai Gold Exchange and the futures uh, market that they have. Right now, there's a there's a small arbitrage in gold between the COMEX and the LBMA and the futures exchange in Shanghai. There's a much larger arbitrage in silver. And how do you see this playing out over the course of the next several months because I don't I personally don't think it's going to take very long at the way that silver's acting uh, at the physical silver versus the paper silver well, how do you see this this arbitrage playing out over the next year or or so well uh, two things um, first of all um, regarding what you what you said prior to asking the question um, you said gold is the only way you know to counteract the damaging effect of inflation. And important to understand is that uh, you know gold is money, and yes. w what it does is uh, once you move some of your fiat currency savings into gold, uh, you basically protect yourselves from from inflation. If you want to also profit, you need to own. Uh, assets that are appreciating and cash flowing as well. Very important for every uh, person is to be very diverse and allocate a portion of his wealth into several asset categories um, all the time because, um, you know, some public companies are so well run and are so profitable that they are able to raise their prices higher than the rate of inflation. And so there's a lot of money to be made in the stock market if you know what you're doing, as well as in other asset classes. I don't want to get into it too much, but just uh, it's important to understand that asset allocation is very is a very important theme in a portfolio. The savings part is absolutely true what you said. It's important to have most of your savings. Um, you know, fiat currencies are, are absolutely intrinsically Worthless. The only thing that gives them value is the ability to collect tax revenue and pay off uh, uh, the the uh, the interest on the debt and and the principal. So once this it's a system of trust, and once right. this trust becomes a pr problematic, um, you know it, it can either reset, hyperinflate, or deflate. Uh, I'm sorry, default. But either way, it's, it's going to create very big geopolitical problems, wars. Um, and, I, and I would say this, wars can be ignited to get the people's minds off of, uh, of what's going on. Regarding silver, what I love about this particular precious metal is the fact that right now, if you ask the average person, he thinks that silver is an industrial metal. Very few people 
understand that it's money. Now, the reason is it's it's because it's been demonetized by governments. Now, here's here's a few things to remember. Um, silver is well, gold is unattainable for most people in the world the way it's priced right now. So if if a if a global crisis hits, silver is going to be monetized by by the free market, and if it's not just an industrial metal like it is today, uh, mostly, if governments and, st and central banks start ho uh, hoarding it, and this is a copycat effect, obviously, you know this, because once, then, once, once central banks does something, the rest will do it because they don't want to be different than, than this one. They don't want to be blamed for not taking action on any particular thing. So you can see that in interest rates. Once, once one uh, central bank lowered interest rates, the rest felt, hey, we got to do the same thing. We don't want to be blamed for high interest rates, etc. So you see a real big copycat game throughout the planet um, with central banks and government. So once one government starts hoarding silver, the rest will come and, and do the same. That can overnight change the perspective of silver. And, um, you know, it's one of the only commodities that has not passed the, the 1980 high of it. So it's still less. It's 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 less than half of what it was in 1980. There's not many commodities that this can be said of. Not um, many products, period, of of any kind, whether it's a commodity or whatever it is, doesn't matter. Correct. <laughs> correct. And and the reason is, Rory, this is an industrial metal right now, and so the objective is to keep it the price down because you want it affordable, so you can put it in cell phones. You know, laptops. It's 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 the best uh, electricity cut, uh, uh, electric uh, cattle litter in the world. So um, once it changes uh, the men once the mentality about it changes back to the fact that it's it's money. And if you ever held a silver eagle or a bullion in your hand, you know it feels like money. It just does. It has this powerful feeling about it um, that you don't get touching just iron or something. And um, it has a wonderful sound, also. Oh, it, 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 it's money. It's basically money. So um, it's very important that people understand this is the biggest speculate uh, speculative play inside of of the precious metals arena. And I would say this: silver stocks are even more amazing once they begin their uh, uh, their rise from ancient wealth into modern riches uh you know the, it can go parabolic real quick now if i want to make sure that i understand what you said correctly uh leor because you made a very interesting comment and then you started explaining about central banks getting involved and what you sure. said was the silver silver will be re-monetized by the free market and sure. Then you explained that you you and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounded like you said that you believe that that there's going to be a central bank that gets involved in bringing silver back into their vaults. And sure. how is that possible with the fact that? Silver is currently mined at about nine and a half to one to gold, which means there's not very much of it. And just about all of the mine supply goes to industry with very little left over to go to investment for investment purposes. And there's only, there's only so much, I mean, as, as, uh, an associate and colleague, uh, Louis Camarasano over at Small Gold, the way that he describes it is a pie, and there's only so much. That pie is only so big, which is right. So, how would that how would that work as far as who's going to lose? How is how is industry going to be able to say, well, we're cool with that. Y'all go ahead and take take all of our silver. We won't make any more cell phones or televisions or computers. But we'll you've, have you've, money. Sure. You'll, you've touched on exactly the right point. That's exactly why it's a very speculative uh, – well, I, I wouldn't say speculative. It's, it's a very explosive 
trade because there's such a constraint. Look, the futures market for silver, if, if, you, if you delivered on, on everything, it, there's about four months left of silver in the world. Right. It, that means it's, it's insane. Um, the word silver itself in 79 languages is money. Right. The wor- <laughs> you got to realize this. And, and there was a silver standard throughout the planet uh, in, in, uh, not too long ago. I'm talking two, three hundred years ago. Silver standards were abound. And that's because it's very affordable. It, it's it's very true that the mine supply is constrained and most of the silver cannot be recycled because it goes in such small portions into everyday items. And that's exactly what I told you. The, the, it's, it's so industrialized that it's not like gold where everything that, that ever that has ever been mined is above ground and uh, it's, it's, it's somewhere. Um, you know, somebody owns it. Silver is not like that. When, when you throw uh, electronics away, that's it. That silver is, is gone. Mostly they're trying to find ways to, to, you know, recycle it, but it's, it's uh, very hard to do. So, um, you know, I don't know how it's going to play out. It's probably going to be very secretive at, at, uh, at the beginning. Um, and I would say that countries that have had silver as, uh, as, as a monetary standard before, they might be the one to start. So maybe Mexico, or somewhere where silver is, is more abound, and they can nationalize the mines or do something. But um, uh, it's you, just you don't it, think that you don't think that there would be a war started over something like that. There, there could be. There, so many things are coming into play right now, Rory, around the world that you just uh, you, you just need to prepare prepare yourself for everything. That's why it's very important to keep your own precious metals outside of a safe deposit box in, in your bank or something like that because it can close you know anything can happen um it, it, it's just uh it, it's just a, a world where you have to be responsible for yourself right now yes yes it is and if you're not being responsible for yourself then shame on you you need to get with the program because ain't nobody gonna take care of you except you and that's that's, that's just a fact i mean I don't mean to be harsh or ugly or rude, but that's that's just the truth right there. I mean, the government's not coming to help you, and probably very few people outside of your closest and closest of friends and family are are going to be there for you in times of crisis like what we're like what we're discussing here. And uh, Lior. Uh, why don't you tell everybody about what you do specifically over at uh, Wealth Research Group? I know you put together these uh, special reports and you've got a tab over there at wealthresearchgroup.com uh, for special reports and just give people a little bit of an idea of what's going on with those. Sure. So Wealth Research Group was founded uh, in order to help people strengthen their financial fortress daily. And what we do is we, we, uh, we have a rich plethora of information that's devised into several categories. Um, on our website, you'll see a personal finance um, section where, where we talk about just great ways of, um, of saving, uh, saving money and uh, very uh, unique ways of um, uh, making your tax brackets better, etc., and just living life better. And then you got uh, wealth stocks. That's on our on our top menu. Those are long term compounding monsters of companies that uh, those are like your set and forget uh, investments that they will help you uh, increase your wealth um, for decades. And our focal point, our main focal point, is the resource sector. And um, wh- what we have on the special reports tab is for astute advanced investors who want to get you know want to get the real facts and want to know everything they they can about what's going on right now with gold silver and the mining sector uh, that's where you want to uh, you want to take uh, the time to, to research which uh, special reports are are, uh, are good for you especially and, and just uh, you know you download them and it, they, they contain such valuable content there's the five principles of, of timeless investing success in there, um, uh, you know, the China appetite 
for commodities and a lot of gold and silver content. And, and you know, what we do with the, with the 365 Wealth newsletter, uh, the free letter, is uh, um, we put our research every two, three days. It goes out on the big picture, what's going on. Um, we put out uh, interviews on YouTube with just the titans of industry. And what we spend most of the time doing is research the gold and silver uh, stock market. And uh, we, we probably looked at about 758 companies this year. And we profile very strategic, very uh, um, uh, timely uh, stocks at ideal times. And they're separated into three categories. Steroid stocks are where we partner up with um, and suggest um, companies that are run by the legends of the gold and silver mining industry because this is such a tough business. you got to go with only the best. Our second niche, and this is something you, you're going to like, Rory, is called targeted buyouts. It's where small cap companies have their projects near the mega cap uh, uh, producers, and it's very likely that at some point they will get bowed out for a huge premium. So we took a look at about 300 of them and boiled down like the best five, and we're, we're being patient, waitingly, waiting for an ideal uh, price to – uh, send out our, the alerts, and the third uh, niche, which is which is something that's very safe. This is this is where you want to be very astute. That's called cell light businesses, Rory. Cell light businesses are businesses that don't. You know, Levi Strauss. You know, uh, okay. Well, Levi Strauss didn't get dirty a day in his life. Yet he's one of the guys who made the most amount of money in the California gold rush. And the fact of the matter is what he had is a satellite business. So he catered to the needs of all the prospector, prospectors, all the producers, by giving them something they all needed. And that's what satellite business do. They provide necessary tools for the gold and silver industry without uh, taking on some, some of the large uh, risks involved. And we had great success with those companies this year as well. And right now we're focus on, focusing on uh, the future, which is lithium and zinc, cobalt. Uh, so it's, it's a very rich environment for, for uh, something we call metallionaires. And metallionaires are basically resource investors who understand the risks, the cyclicality, and the volatility involved with investing. But they know that the upside is uh, it, it, so it's really remarkable that all you got to do is really stay disciplined and make a profit. That sounds good to me. Staying disciplined oh. and make a and make a profit sounds 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 easy enough. Sounds like you are are staying busy over there, uh, Lior, and and digging digging deep in into uh, what's going on, and and sounds like you have a great service to provide for people. And is there uh, is there anything you anything you would like to uh, leave the audience with this afternoon? Um, sure, uh, I would say this. Uh, you know, in times like this, make sure that you are providing the best service you can at your place of business, your job, your occupation. This is going to be your main source of income, and you don't want to lose that. You don't want to go uh, uh, right now and 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 you know, be unemployed. This is going to be a very tough time to be unemployed. It's going to be very, a very hard time to get into the employment cycle again. So over deliver um, at, at what you're doing at your main career. This is something that's very important. And I want to also say that uh, that retirees they really have a hard time right now because uh, bonds and uh, fixed income assets are. I'm just ridiculously low. It's it's impossible to live off interest and bonds and and, and uh, I think retirees need a very um, advanced plan right now. And this is something we're focusing on in November, December, and January over at Wealth Research Group. So if this is something you're interested in or bothered by, or you're looking for more advanced strategies on what to do, this is also something to consider. You can just uh, you know go to the homepage, sign up, take us for a test drive. And uh, we're focusing right now on uh, very advanced strategies for retirees. 
I would think that that is something that a lot of people, a lot of a lot of my audience would would be very interested in, and because of the recent reports about how poorly uh, pension programs are doing. I mean, you have two of the you have the two largest. You have Calpers, which is the California pension program, and then you have the Teamsters. Both of these programs are in a lot of trouble. These affect hundreds of thousands of people. And I would think that having a having a at, at least listening to or researching viable alternative to these programs, that's got to be at the top of a lot of people's list. It's been at the top of my list for a long time. And well, Rory, what we're doing is we're, we have created a program called Fortressing. Fortressing, building your own economy for retirement. And we have three amazing tools that I, I don't believe most of your listeners even heard about. And so this is very exciting. This is coming. Um, the, the information will start going and, and pouring into our members uh, next week. So very, very uh, exciting times. It sounds like it. Well, I would uh, encourage everyone to sign up for the, the free newsletter, find out what's going on. And uh, Lior, I hope we can do this again in the not too distant future. And I certainly appreciate all your time. And you can find all this information over at wealthresearchgroup.com and there'll be a link uh, below in the uh, description. So Lori, uh, thank you very much. Well, thank you and have a wonderful afternoon, Lior, and we'll, we'll talk with you soon. Thank you. Thank you for, for uh, hosting me.